the Pittsburgh Steelers got on a roll quick against the Cincinnati Bengals. These division rival AFC North games are never easy, especially for a Steelers team that was coming off a game that did not go their way on Thursday night in Cleveland. But you knew in typical Mike Tomlin fashion that the guys on this team were going to come out with a renewed energy and a different game plan. And that was clear from the jump. I know Cleveland was not the most ideal environment to score points in with all the snow, but in Cincy, the Steelers put on an offensive clinic. Najee Harris had a great game, he showed some tough running, Russell Wilson threw for over 400 yards, he connected all game long with Pickens and Pat Fryermuth, and the thing Pittsburgh did that really was the difference in why they had such an offensive explosion was they took what the defense gave them, and they exposed that weak secondary. Both Harris and Warren had a ton of receiving yards from checkdowns, and the experience of Russell Wilson is really starting to kick in. All he needed was to get back into the right system. He is showing all of us that he is still an elite QB. So in this video, I want to talk all about the Steelers win over the Bengals, as well as everything else going on with this team. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are on the road to 40,000 subscribers and with your support, I believe that we can get there super fast. Also, I put a link to my Discord in the comments below. I'm starting up a brand new community. It's brand new. There's not really many people in it yet, but really, I just want to have a place where we can all chat about sports. I can have combos with each and every one of you guys, and you guys can also give me ideas for what to talk about in upcoming videos. And I will also probably be doing giveaways in the future as well, so please take a second to join that community. It really would mean a lot. Alright, so recapping the 44-38 win over the Bengals, this was a game where the Pittsburgh offense came out of the gate hot, and really, the defense just had to maintain in the second half. The Bengals made it a little closer than most people would have liked, but there was still not much stress at all. Tomlin's teams don't choke games like this. The Bengals actually started out the scoring in this game first on a weird play where Cam Taylor Britt ended up taking an interception to the house. This could have been a deflating play, but Pittsburgh instantly responded. Najee Harris had a few tough runs to start shredding the defense early, and the offensive line established their dominance. And then Russell Wilson hit George Pickens for a 17-yard touchdown. Pickens really is starting to become a star, and you can expect Russ to find him in the end zone at least once a game. But the Bengals responded with a touchdown of their own. Chase Brown has really emerged as one of the better running backs in the NFL, and he broke a 40-yard run loose to put the Bengals in scoring position on the one-yard line, and he took it in himself. But it was pretty much all Steelers after this. Najee did have a weird injury that slowed him down. It looked like a hamstring initially, but Patterson was able to drive the offense forward, and then Russ hit Calvin Austin for a 23-yard touchdown to tie the game. But Cincinnati wasn't done yet. Joe Burrow hit Jamar Chase in the back of the end zone, but then Najee Harris punched in a 10-yard touchdown of his own to make the score 21-21 with about 7 minutes to go in the second quarter. Chris Boswell would nail a 50-yarder as well as a 34-yarder, and Pittsburgh would enter the locker room with a 6-point lead. The Bengals did hit a field goal to put it within 3, but then the Steelers' offense really took off. Wilson hit Fryermuth for a 25-yard touchdown, and then in the 4th, Peyton Wilson recovered a Burrow fumble and took it to the house. And from there, the game was pretty much over. The Bengals did find a way to give themselves a chance, but it was too little too late. The Steelers moved to 9-3, and, and they are really starting to separate themselves in the AFC. I expected them to be good, but I can't say I expected them to be this good. But here we are. It really is incredible how Russell Wilson went from basically being run out of the NFL to now making plays and opening up the offense for this team. I thought he played a phenomenal game from start to finish in Cincy, and I'm not one that likes to blame the refs, but the officiating definitely was pretty one-sided in this game, at least in my opinion. But the Steelers overcame that. Putting up 44 points in a game like this really was a wake-up call to the rest of the league that this team has arrived. And they aren't just here to put up a good record, they want to win the Super Bowl. And there's been a lot of questions about what the ceiling of this team really is, but week by week, I think they are really starting to show us that there is no ceiling. This team can be as good as they want to be. I mean, 44 points is about as many as you can score in the current state of the NFL. It was quite the show, and now the Steelers will look to keep this offense rolling. 
I mean, it's December now. This is the time of year where the men separate themselves from the boys. There are no more fluke runs. So the Steelers are legit. That's basically what I've been trying to say this whole time. And as a Browns fan, it pains me to say that. But I've honestly just given up on the Browns. Obviously, as a fan, I still dislike this team. But I do like Justin Fields because of Ohio State. And they really do just play a winning brand of football. The culture that Tomlin has instilled into this franchise for two decades really does deserve a ton of props. You just don't see it often. Really, the only two franchises that I would say have a legit winning culture right now is the Steelers and the Chiefs. They just win. There's not much else to it. Alright, now let's move forward and look towards the upcoming game against the Cleveland Browns, because this is an interesting one. As a Browns fan, I honestly would like to lose to help the draft stock. We already got our Pittsburgh win for the year, so I'm satisfied. But the Browns over the last 3 or 4 years are actually one of those teams that Pittsburgh has really had a hard time with, and the Bengals have not been much different. You know the Browns are going to still come out with a lot of fight, especially Miles Garrett, who is going to want to prove again why he is better than TJ Watt. So the offensive line is going to have to be on their A game, and our Arthur Smith is going to have to draw up a very balanced offense. They need to not commit to anything, they need to come out with an initial game plan, and they need to adjust if things don't start out hot. You can pretty much tell from the first couple throws of the game what kind of day it's going to be for Jameis Winston. I'll admit, when Jamo gets hot, he really can be fun to watch, but even when he's on a roll, every now and then he will make a stupid throw. I mean, we saw it against the Ravens. So the key for the Steelers defense will be to actually get those interceptions. Dropped interceptions is how Winston wins games. So if the defense can get through that offensive line and create pressure, they will force a few bad throws and it ultimately will be up to the secondary to capitalize if the Steelers want to beat Cleveland. But outside of that, I think everyone is super happy with how things are going for this team. There is not too much you can really complain about. Here is what Mike Tomlin, along with some of the other guys, had to say about this win. It was good to go on the road and get an AFC North victory. Um, no, it wasn't an easy one, uh, obviously, man, particularly if you spot a group like that seven. Um, they had big time urgency, man, um, for a lot of reasons. And, and so to come in here in their place against the type of quality team that they have um, and in this environment and, and, and smile in the face of it and get out of here with the necessary win, man, it just can't say enough about the efforts of the guys in that locker room, the splash playmaking. Uh, continually over the course of 60 minutes, we knew it would be required. We even talked about the fourth quarter component. Um, you know, this, team's all, this team we played today always comes storming back um, in the fourth. They did it against LAC um, just on the front side of their bye. And so uh, we don't take the end of the game for granted, man. We're thankful for the victory. Obviously, we got some things to clean up, um, but that's, that's life in this business. Uh. I thought, I thought George made a great catch down the sideline. I thought Pat's plays on his scrambles and also, too, just how he was clear, painting clear pictures. I always say, you know, the best receivers are always playing a clear picture. Those guys were painting great pictures today. Um, you know, I thought, um, thought guys made a lot of plays. I thought Naj ran the ball extremely well. That was huge for us in our run game. And um, he just had a great day, man. And uh, I thought just everybody was a great team effort that's really all i have to say for this video thank you all so much if you made it to this point and if you enjoyed it and haven't yet please be sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world and also let me know what you would like to see next and until then i will see you all later